What's up, Fabrication Nation? So last video, last video of the Bibster, told you that I was gonna do a video on the Goose, get that thing kind of tidied up. So that's what we're gonna do. I guess I need to start off, because it's been such a long time, kind of give you the behind the scenes uh, story of the goose. Because a lot of you, especially if you're new to the channel, probably don't even know what this thing is. So this is my 1984 Fox Body Mustang. It's a, uh, it's a hatch car. Kind of wish it was a coupe, but it is what it is. This was my very first car, so 16, 15, 16 years old, this is a car I bought. Drove it in high school. And then, yeah, just over the years, uh, kind of turned into this. Pretty quick rundown of the specs on it. Basically 25.5 chassis in it. And when I say basically, um, I built the entire Cage structure to be 25.5 certified, except for I wanted to leave out a couple bars because I didn't know that I didn't know if I was going to actually use it as a race car. Um, but if I was going to do it, I wanted to do it to spec. That way, if I did want to upgrade it for myself, or if I wanted to sell the car one day, it'd be easy to do. So basically, it's 25.5 uh, minus the funny car section, and then just a couple tubes. Um, that would go like under the tranny. So I mean, it looks very similar like your basic 10 point setup, uh, except for, you know, some crossbars and then like behind behind the driver. It's got a lot of the funny car stuff for the, the driver's cage. It's got this kicker bar, which is mandatory. So basically if I wanted to make the funny car portion, I would just add that tube, it'd go up, tie into here, uh, cross and back down and tie back into there. Everything else is is ready for cert. I mean, it even has the tubes that kind of run through the floorboard under the driver's seat. You don't see them because I've got them like recessed into the floor, but they're there. Engine combo is a 400 cubic inch dart block, um, Windsor based, you know, 351 Windsor based 400 cubic inch dart block. It's got all the good stuff. Rods, crank, pistons. Um, it's got a, uh, I went hydraulic roller. So when I bought the engine itself, I bought it, it was already done. Somebody else had built it for a twin turbo setup. Came with a solid roller setup. But years and years of racing this car, I knew that I didn't, I wasn't gonna, I didn't want it to be a full out race car. I wanted to drive this thing on the street as much as I possibly could. So I switched it back to Hydraulic roller setup. Uh, I've got twin 70s and just got a front mount intercooler. And the actual tubing itself off the intercooler runs through the fender well uh, into the cab of the car and then comes out and right in the motor. I want it to be as clean as possible. You know, I'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to these kind of projects, and that's really what I was after. It's actually a little more crowded than. Than I wanted things that I still need to do well let's go back to the minimalist thing so like I kind of hid the gates on this thing so it's got gates that are kind of recessed in the exhaust just drops right out the bottom there and then goes back under and kind of mounts up you know where the factory exhaust would on both sides like I said the induction uh, comes off the turbos goes down and around underneath here kind of makes a u-turn um, right into the front front mount intercooler out the other side goes up through the fender well so it's like right up here basically touching this fender or really close blow off valve is in here makes a turn underneath the cowling and then comes in the car right there so some of the things I still want to do to this thing that need to be done Clean up the spark plug wires. Uh, got new ones that need to go on. Um, probably gonna wrap the rest of this exhaust. 
on both sides get all that wrapped up uh, mainly because I keep burning myself on it and you know it wouldn't be a bad idea to eliminate engine heat I kept a factory style water pump I didn't want to go electric just because I knew I was gonna drive the heck out of this thing and you know these things are a lot more reliable when you use them all the time versus an electric so just standard style water pump and an alternator everything else on the car is very race uh, oriented so there's a crank trigger setup standalone engine management i'm running uh, big stuff three on this thing the distributor is basically just a cam sync it doesn't actually do any of the timing function on it all that's done by the crank trigger itself uh it's a mess in here right now but on the inside run in like I said, the Big Stuff 3, got it mounted here, and then uh, we're on a digital 7 Plus, so I can do a lot of timing and two steps and, um, you know, stuff by gear and all that stuff on the on the MSD. The Big Stuff will do some of that stuff too, but I like to, it's a little easier to do some of the timing stuff on the MSD versus the Big Stuff. And then obviously, you know, all the fueling and all that stuff takes place up here. What else? Um, other than the Kirkies and stuff, I wanted the interior to kind of remain pretty close to factory. So it's got a factory dash and center console. The gear are going to go back in here. I'll carpet the rear to kind of cover it up. Uh, fuel tank. This thing used to have a fuel cell in it when I used to race it all the time. I wanted to kind of do away with that back to the factory settings. I didn't want like an external pump to be overheating or have any issues with that. So put a factory Cobra style tank back in it and then just running the on three uh fuel pump hat setup that goes in it running three pumps i think they're three 340 pumps um so far you know there's no reason to run all three of them uh if i'm gonna get out and make some boost on the street or something i might click two of them on but at the boost levels i'm running right now one pump is actually plenty so what else Nothing fancy, power glide set up. 8.8 uh, eight in the rear with some 33 spline axles and a spool and it's got aerospace brakes all the way around. Uh, AFCO rear double adjustable shocks. Uh, up front, I think it's got some kind of, I know they're adjustable, I think maybe they're Coney adjustable struts. Yeah, I mean just nothing crazy fancy. A lot of drag race stuff, even though it's really just going to be my get out, kick around, hot rod. So yeah. So as you probably noticed, there's no interior in the car. Uh, mainly because I've been kind of messing with some of the stuff. Got the dash out and it's just a shell of a dash. I basically took all the framing out behind it and then just made some tabs to mount it in there. A couple things I had to do is kind of fix the latch for the glove box. Um, kind of changing up the trans brake line lock setup, so that's what that is. And really just working on those things, getting this interior back in the car, getting the rest of the wiring done as far as the line lock and trans brake go, center console, all that kind of stuff, get all that back in the car, that's what we're working on today. It's uh, time to get that thing on the dyno. Uh, Tune-up's pretty good at full throttle right now. It's only making about five or six pounds of boost though. And so before I turned it up, I wanna kinda of get some of the street manners figure, figured out and then put it on the dyno, we can turn it up a little bit. Probably, I think what I'm gonna do, probably run pump gas up to about 10, 11 pounds of boost on that thing. And then maybe have, trying to kind of decide whether I wanna go E85. Um, go E85, try to make big power on E85 or do like a C16 setup, so I don't know yet. I gotta figure that out. I don't know that I got enough injector for E85. So, I don't know. Like I said, it's not really a race car, although I would like to make some pretty good numbers, and I'm sure it will end up at the track at some point. So, I gotta, gotta figure some stuff out. There's another Fox Body project I've got. It is uh, what I call basically my Fox Body hot rod. So, think of like 30s hot rod, uh but with a fox body like my style it's been narrowed and chopped and custom sheet metal and getting ready to 
kind of finish up the back side of this thing soon. All right, enough talking. You guys get the gist. Most of you guys know these projects already. Um, I like the Fox bodies pretty good. And I've got a love for C10s too, actually all of the years. This is an 80, it's actually a 78, three plus three. I had a 69 on the channel I built, the Black Pearl. Also had uh, a 64 I built called Crown Spoil. Some of you guys might remember that thing. All right, let's, uh, let's work on the goose. All right, so I got everything kind of done the way I want it. Just some male and female butt connectors there. Those will attach. These will actually go on the bottom of the trans brake button itself. Everything's kind of tied up temporarily until I get everything done. Once I know that all the wiring's done, then I'll go back and loom it and kind of trim off some of these zip ties and that sort of thing. So the way that this thing is kind of set up the dash has to go in first, and then the center console. The center console can't go in unless I remove the shifter, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it loose. Start putting the plastics back in it. might notice that this is a late model dash going in in 84. So I converted it years ago. It's actually not that hard of a conversion. You just kind of change these upper mounting tabs. <clears throat> I just like this dash much better than the old one. And then um, obviously I made my own gauge cluster and I mounted it separately. Usually these things from the factory are mounted to the dash itself, but I didn't want to, I wanted to be able to pull the dash out without disconnecting all the gauges and or wires or anything really. That way I could fire it up, drive it. It would be fully operational without the dash in it. And that way if I need to kind of uh, chase gremlins or whatever, I didn't have to get underneath it to kind of trace wires. I could just pull the dash out work on stuff it would drive and whatever and then i can just pop it back in uh, the only thing is, is the, the only thing i didn't do that with was this section here it goes around the gauge closer i do have uh um an afr gauge which is also boost controller so but it's just plugged in i can unplug it it's pretty easy to pretty easy to get in and out
I ended up having to split this thing in half. So I cut it there and it's got a cut mark back here on the back side just so I could put it in two pieces, but I like the way it turned out. Button's kind of like out there in your face, but I wanted it to be, I guess, more of in a good position. So like, as soon as I leave, I can shift if I need to. And then the top button is for the line lock. So line lock, trans brake, and you can see, or maybe you can't because the window's dirty, but got a nitrous gauge on the dash or under the hood, and it's actually my brake pressure. So pump it up 600 pounds hit the line lock it's gonna hold till let go or if you want to do those like roll and burn outs you go up six seven hundred pounds and then you just give the old line lock a blip and then the car will start to roll still doing a burnout and then you can let off so far so good I'm pretty happy with it uh, still got some little touches that need to happen so for instance, I want to make like a little bezel that goes around uh, this piece here. Maybe attaches to the to this. So like kind of fit in there like the something. Gotta make some kind of beauty ring or something to go in there. Where the radio goes and the AC controls go. I want to do something in there as well. Um, probably make them where they pop loose so I can get back to the, the fuses back there in the back. And you can see the boost controller AFR gauge on this side. I took those switches out and made a little filler plate in the back. And then, uh, can't really see it because of the reflection, but actually, I think it'd be turning the car on. So, yeah, there you go. And if you let it warm up, it'll give you current AFR reading on it. And you guys probably seen these a long time ago. It's just my phantom gauges that are recessed in the dash. So basically I just gotta make a filler plate for this side too. Since I'm not putting those switches back in there, I don't think. And then I'm either gonna put uh, the vents back in or maybe make fillers for those as well because I got another one over there. So current AFR without it, without it on is 22.4 to one, which is I think probably as lean as it gets. One of the things I thought about doing if I don't put the vents back in on this side is maybe make like a comport um like a mounted or recessed comport adapter so instead of having to like get under the dash or, or pull a cable out you know I want to tap into the big stuff three for some tuning I can just plug right in there and put the laptop on top of the car or actually sit it here in the passenger seat so I'll probably try to figure something out like that I'd like to do something obviously nice and clean and Pretty cool, but I don't know. I don't really know exactly what that is yet. I've also I've already done it, but I've also got uh, split speaker grills to go around the uh, the cage in here. So it's got like a top section and a bottom section, and it just kind of fills this in perfectly. Like I said in the beginning, she's uh, pretty fat right now at idle and under idle. But uh, let's uh, let's fire it up right quick. We'll put it on the two step. Kind of play around with the uh, the uh, line lock and trans brake and that sort of stuff just cuz just cuz it's cool when you guys haven't heard it in a while
go a little update video on the goose like I said hopefully sometime soon next month or two get it on the dyno get it sorted out definitely want that done before springtime I mean I want to drive it I want to get out kick around cruise around next video back on the bibster